In this lecture, we're going to be talking about half-wave rectifiers with inductive loads. So let's go ahead and draw the circuit for this rectifier. So as you can see, the circuit is just like the previous example that we looked at with a resistive load, with the exception that we've added an inductor called L1. And now remember that inductors oppose rapid change in current. And we can see that by writing the equation for a voltage through an inductor, which is given by VL equals L di dt. So the voltage across an inductor is given by the inductance of the inductor times the rate of change of current with respect to time. And so we can solve for di dt which would be equal to VL over L. So we can see that as the inductance of an inductor gets bigger, the rate of change of current is going to get smaller. So what that means then for a rectifier is that the current at the output is going to be lagging the output voltage, meaning that they're not going to be like in the previous example where they're the same shape. In this case, the current is going to be behind in time with respect to the voltage. So let's go ahead and draw the output voltages and currents. So just like in the previous example, the input voltage is going to be a perfect sinusoid. So it's going to look like this and the output voltage from 0 to pi is going to look just like in the previous example. But now for this case, the current is going to be lagging the voltage, again, meaning that it's going to be farther behind in time. So it's going to look like this. So there's going to be a difference between the output voltage and the output current in time for this rectifier. And so what that does is that for the output, remember that a diode conducts when it's forward biased or when there's a current flowing through it. So the current flowing through it has to be zero for it to turn off. So for this example, if we look at the output voltage at pi, there's still current flowing through the circuit. So the diode is not going to turn off until the current goes to zero. So the diode is going to continue to conduct until the output current goes to zero. So the output voltage then slightly goes into a negative portion now. So it's going to look like this. From zero to pi is positive. It's going to go negative from pi until the current goes to zero. And then it's going to come back to zero. And this, of course, repeats. So again, positive, going slightly into negative, then back to zero. And likewise, the output current is going to repeat. So the peak of the output voltage is going to be just like in the previous example. If we say that Vn has a peak magnitude of V, then the peak of the output voltage is also going to be V. However, the peak of the output current is going to change as compared to the previous example. So remember that last time we said that V equals IR Therefore, I equals V over R. And a more true statement for this would be to say that V equals I Z, Z being the impedance of the circuit. Now, in the previous example, there was no inductance in the circuit, so the impedance and the resistance were the same value. But for this case, we have to take into account the inductance of the inductor. So the peak of the output current then is going to be equal to V over Z. Again, Z being the impedance of the circuit. And we can calculate that by the following equation. So the impedance is equal to the square root of the square root of the resistance plus the square root of the reactance, where the reactance is given by omega L. So in order to write this would be square root of R squared plus X squared, where X is equal to omega L. So again, the peak of the output current then is going to be this point right here, which is going to be V over 
z. Now one more thing that we want to know is how much the current is being delayed with respect to the voltage because that's going to tell us how deep into the negative portion the V output goes into. So in other words we want to calculate what this angle is and let's call it phi. So phi would be from here to here. It's basically the angle from pi until the current goes to zero. And that angle is given by phi equals the inverse tangent of omega L over R. So now let's take a look at our numerical example. Okay, so just like in the previous example, we're going to say that Vn is equal to 170 sine 377t volts. And let's say that L1 is equal to 20 millihenry and R1 is equal to 10 ohms. Now remember that in the previous example R1 was also 10 ohms. So let's calculate a couple things. Let's first calculate the impedance of the circuit. So the reactance of the inductor is going to be equal to omega L which is 377 times 20 millihenry So that's going to be equal to 7.54 ohms. So now we can calculate the impedance of the circuit, which is going to be equal to 10 squared plus 7.54 squared, which is equal to 12.52 ohms. So then again, the peak of the output current is going to be equal to, let's call it I out peak. It's going to be equal to 170 over 12.52, which is equal to 13.58 amps. And let's also calculate the delay of the output current with respect to the voltage. So let's calculate the angle phi, which is equal to the inverse tangent of 377 times 20 millihenry over 10 ohms. So again, this is omega L over R. And this is equal to approximately 37.02 degrees. And we can convert this angle to time by knowing that the period of a 60 hertz sine wave, and remember that we're assuming that the input voltage is at 60 hertz. So knowing that the period of that is 16.6 .6 milliseconds and that we're delaying by 37.02 degrees, we can divide that by 360 degrees, which is one cycle. And that gives us approximately 1.7 milliseconds. So what we're saying is that the output current is delayed in time by approximately 1.7 milliseconds after half of the cycle. So let's go ahead and draw the output voltage and current. So let me just write it over here so that we don't forget. I output peak is equal to 13.58 amps. And angle phi is equal to 1.7 milliseconds. Or rather, angle phi converted to time is equal to 1.7 milliseconds. So remember that half a cycle of a 60 hertz waveform is approximately 8.3 milliseconds. So we'll call this point right here 8.3 milliseconds. And then a full cycle of a 60 hertz waveform is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. And we're going to call this point right here 8.3 plus 1.7 milliseconds, which was the delay of the current. So this point right here is going to be approximately 10 milliseconds. So the output voltage is going to look like this. It's going to come to 8.3 milliseconds 
and it's going to continue going negative until it goes to 10 milliseconds back to zero and then it's going to repeat again of course so this point right here the peak of the output voltage is going to be 170 volts which is the peak of the input voltage and so let's now draw the output current again this is going to be delayed from the output voltage and it's going to go to zero at 10 milliseconds and then it's going to be zero and it's going to repeat as well and the peak of that is going to be equal to 13.58 amps which again was V over Z so you can see here that we've done two things one we've worsened the output voltage because now it's going negative where before it wasn't so we're worsening the rectification of the output voltage, but we've improved the output current slightly because now it's more stretched. So the peak amplitude is lower, but it's stretched over a longer time. So just like in the previous example, let's calculate the average of the output voltage so we can compare this to the other example. So now remember that the average of V out is going to be 1 over the period, which is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. So 16.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 3 for milliseconds times the integral from 0 to 10 milliseconds, which is when the output voltage goes to 0. And remember that in the previous example, this was 8.3 milliseconds. So from 0 to 10 milliseconds of the input voltage, which is 170 sine 377T dt. So if we compute this, this comes out to be... 0 0.289 of V in, which is 170 volts. So this is going to be equal to 49.13 volts. And now remember that in the previous example, the resistive load, the average of V out was 54.23 volts. So we've worsened the output voltage, or rather the average of the output voltage by about 5 volts by adding this inductor, but we've improved the rectification of the output current a little bit. So next let's take a look at how we can improve the output current while not worsening the output voltage.